Welcome back to another episode of the Educated and Directed Podcast with your host, Apollo PN. No better, Nina. And we are back again with another episode of Educated uh, Conversations with a little bit of sprinkle of reckless rhetoric. Yes, there we go. How was your week? Uh, my week is... I think the, I think my past week was cool, I think. I don't think anything crazy happened. I, I don't know. I don't remember. Of course. Classic. You know, yeah, I don't remember anything bad happening last week. Uh, I think, uh, oh, I went to London, Ontario. Mm-hmm. Was that your know. first time or something? Yeah, my first time in London, Ontario. <laughs> Who the fuck goes to London, Ontario? I mean, I went there for the beach, but that was like one time and then I never, like I, I didn't explore. I just went to the beach. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so what did you do there? I was just there for work, but yeah, it was cool. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it was cool. <laughs> it was cool, man. I, well, one thing I'm starting to realize with a lot of these small towns I do go to, mm-hmm. or not to say small towns, but like small cities, like small developed cities. Yeah. They got a wild homeless problem, yeah. Homeless problem? Really? Yeah, like a wild homeless problem. I, pu- I pulled to Guelph. Mm-hmm. Guelph has a lot of homeless people in the downtown section. Kitchener, uh, I believe it had like wild uh, homeless people. You know why? This is not Waterloo, my- though. Kitchener, mainly. My theory is because in those towns, there's a lot of, like, drug activity because there's nothing else for people to do there. So, like, yeah. maybe some of these people just have addiction issues and then they just spend all their money. Yeah, same with Hamilton. Big homeless problem. Yeah, I can, I, I could see that, that being yeah. the underlying reason. Is that, where all the, is that where all the drug dealers go to OT and WAPS? <laughs> 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 I'm going to go up to Man. London. And I'm. So I'm assuming they would. I would assume that they would go to small towns, because uh, that's what happens in those places. Like even when I used to live in Ottawa, like that was a big thing too. There's nothing to do uh, there. So drugs are really. Hold on. There's. You could argue that there's nothing to do in Toronto. <laughs> no, but there's a lot. There's a lot more. Look, okay, coming from Ottawa, what do you have? The Parliament Building. That's it. Like, coming here. First of all, all the concerts happen here. There's like. Like, half the time when concerts would happen, people would come from Ottawa to Toronto to check them out. And then you have Wonderland. You have um, the Aquarium. Wonderland's not even in Toronto. That's, like, that In Vaughan. It's not even that far. And then you have... It only takes me 30 minutes to get downtown from my house. And I live right beside Wonderland. It takes then, me 30 minutes to get my, down to my house from the, yeah, downtown it's from not, my house. It's not like it's far. And then you have... Um, okay, the CN Tower, that's whatever. That doesn't really matter. Of uh, The Aquarium... And then you have, like, actual, like, nightlife. Like, Ottawa doesn't have a nightlife like that. They have literally one club. So drugs and sex in Ottawa, then? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't stay long enough where I could hit the legal age, but I was going all age clubbing at fucking 13, 14 years old, so. What legal age are you talking about? Like, legal age 19 to go actual clubbing. Like, I didn't Uh, stay there till that point, but, yeah. So, nothing to do there. Compared yeah. to here, I mean, hey man, at least it's not like small town Ontario where like people yeah that would be for all the rest of their life and just you know have a white picket fence, marry the same girl they went to high school with. Um, There's a town just outside Ottawa called um, Stittsville that's like that, and Carp as well. Those are both like that, and that's where they had like Carp Fair, and that was like our Halloween thing, and it was like this fair and like that you would see happen in small towns. It was very white. I mean, Canada is very white. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyways, what did I do last week? I didn't do anything last week. Um, I, yeah, I did nothing last week. Nothing. I took a week off from working out. And now the gyms are back, so I'm fine. I'm happy again. And um, that's literally it. Um, but Joe Biden won, so I was right. Okay. I mean, it was 50-50 because we, we both picked either or. So, you know. <laughs> Putting it out there, I was right. It's, it's not like we had, like, four people like Canada to where you're like, all right. Well, whatever. So, anyways, he won. Thank God. Um, and the day this drops will be Remembrance Day. So, happy Remembrance Day to everybody. And, yeah. Yeah. And uh, in Canada, we have Remembrance Day. Yeah. And, um, yeah, that's basically oh. it. That I, means it would it would mark my two year well not two year my one year anniversary, uh to where I took flight and left the the, 
the continent to go to Bali. Oh, yeah. You did? November 11th is when I went. It was snowing on that day when I left Canada and I arrived in China 13 hours later. And the coronavirus supposedly actually started in November. So for all we know, you could have come into contact. You know what? I'm not like everyone else <laughs> that has been claiming, yo, so I think it? I had that shit in December, <laughs> yo. I know so many people are saying that. My sister, my boyfriend, everyone's saying it, bro. Like, because both of them got really sick in December. And I remember going to take care of my boyfriend. He was like, literally, I'd never seen like, he was like dead. Like, like his head even was sweating. Like he got up from the pillow and there was a puddle of sweat on the pillow from his head. Like, it was bad, but, like, I took care of him, and I didn't get anything. Yeah. I'm not like everyone else, because I have one friend that keeps on saying, yo, bro, I swear I had it in January, yo. Yeah. That's <laughs> my sister doing the same thing. She's like, I had it, too. I'm like, yeah, okay. Sure. Yeah, I'm like, I'm, I'm not like anyone else. It's like, you got that shit. You, I keep on telling people when they say me, yo, just keep that shit down. Keep it to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Why you... Pr- what? And it goes back... And huh? They think they're immune. That's why. And it goes back to what I said a few months ago. People are proud to say they had this shit. I think because they don't want to catch any flack for like going out and like living a normal life after because they're like, oh, I already had it. So I'm immune. So it doesn't matter. I could do what I want. People are proud to say they had Corona. Why is no one proud to say they had herpes though? Like what the fuck? Because that's different. Herpes stays with you for the rest of your life. Coronavirus goes away after two weeks. Corona can take your life. Yeah, but herpes is more gross. Like, COVID is just COVID. Plus, herpes goes Ooh. away. Like, it physically goes away. Yes, but it's still dormant in your body. Yeah, you'd rather have dormant herpes than, you know, exposed herpes, though. But they're going to become exposed at some point. That's how you find out you have it. But, like, it's not... You understand, like, herpes, like, it, it, it'll pop up. Like, whoa, we're here today. And it's like, whoa, my week is terrible. But, like, it's gone for, like, another seven years. Allegedly, okay. depending on your health. And, and so, mm-hmm. Corona is just a, literally a flu. Yeah, I'd rather have a flu than herpes. No, cor- what Corona is, is just a bad cough. <laughs> and lung issues. Yeah, like I said, it's a bad cough. That's it's a bad it flu. It's a bad cough. Flu. It's a bad cough. It's, it's a <laughs> That's it. Then you, you keep it pushing. Yeah, well, I was watching the Kardashians last week because you know how Chloe had it? So the episode I was watching... What? Yeah, damn, how do they all these celebrities these celebrities who because seem aloof and out of the way they also so be catching it they went on thing chloe and, and kanye got it in the beginning like when the first shutdown happened kanye had it yeah kanye had it too kanye yeah. got it like he got it early no he got it in march because he had it at the same time as chloe they both got it and they had both gone somewhere else like out of state beforehand and they came back and they had it but basically they showed chloe having it and it was like super like like she was good for most of the time and then she had like two days where she was like really fucked up and like coughing and shaking and sweating and then after that she was like fine all right quick question i was driving around right i was downtown and i was driving back up home and i was thinking to myself yo why is this might be a hot take or a, a weird uh, a question but why is not why is asking someone you know how many kids they want on like a date not as a not as evasive as asking someone if they give head or go down on the first date. Like, you know, you ever ask um, yourself that question? Like, I'm going on a date with you, we're, we're vibing and shit like that. You ask me how many kids I want. And I'd be like, yo, you give head? Why is that looked at as crazy and the other because, one's not? Because one is more explicitly in, in uh, insinuating sexual um actions to be happening on the first date than the other like you know you're not gonna have a kid you're not gonna impregnate someone on the first date and you're not saying and you're not saying how many times do you want to have sex in order to have kids but saying do you want to have head is literally like saying like if somebody said that to me on a first date no 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 you're taking my words out of context Nina don't do this to me I no, said, but that's what I'm do you saying. give head? I'm not asking you if okay, you give if head. You say, say, if you do say, you give do head? You give head, yeah. And then it's insinuating, depending on what my answer is, you might ask me to do that for you on the first Come date. On, I don't want to do that. That's no. true. I would be uncomfortable if somebody said that to me on the first date. You're literally asking me if I do something sexual. And the reason for you asking, obviously, what are you looking for? You're looking for an answer to the question in order to see if your needs, sexual desires can be fulfilled and better for you if they can be fulfilled on the first date, which is just all around intrusive. Yeah. Okay. I'll take that and I'll raise you this. 
someone asking asking someone how many kids they want is the same thing in terms of now you're 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 the women have some type of imaginary family that they built up in their heads with like the amount of kids that they say. Not with oh, you though. Oh, you wanna have you wanna have three kids. Oh my vagina is gonna boss. I don't know if I could do that. They no. say some wild shit like that. Some of them, and for the ones who do, okay, fine. But like still, like that, that's what I'm trying to say. When you're seeing how many kids does somebody want, you're not insinuating like like oh, we need to have sex, like, like, you know, like, if you're asking someone, do you give head, it's just, it's more explicit, and it's more like, 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 kids is looking to build with somebody, head is just like, all right, cool, I'm just here to hook up, if you're just here to hook up, you can't build with me, you can't build with the person, if you don't, if you don't do condolingus, or yes, obviously, but you're not explicitly insinuating that, like, you're not explicitly saying, uh, hey, after we fuck, how many kids do you want to have? You're not saying that, <laughs> but when you're saying to someone, "Do you give head?" It's just like it's just way more explicit and way more like, like it puts you in an uncomfortable like spot where you're just like, mm. like how would you feel if a girl said that to you? Actually, don't answer that. You're just gonna give a weird. What if, if she asks me if I if I go down? Yeah, I feel no type of ways. I'd be like, yeah, what's up? Yeah, but that's also because you're a guy. When you're a girl in this world and you get taken advantage of sexually, like think about all the girls, like think about this, for example, you know what I'm thinking of? Like Mm -hmm. somebody who has had some sort of sexual like abuse or sexual assault or sexual trauma happen to them. You don't know about that, but you're on a first date with them. And then you ask them this question that might traumatize them. That's where I'm thinking of where it's like, it's just, how would I know? Even, even otherwise, like for me, like I've never had any of that happen. And for me, it like, I would just be uncomfortable. Like I would be like, ew, like you're coming off as like a pedo, not a pedo, like a creep. <laughs> ha! Oh, sorry. All right. All right. All right. Like, you're just coming off as a douchebag, basically. Like all you want to do is have sex. And that's fine if you do, but don't waste my time and take me on a date. I think you need to have, I think women like to go on dates to understand, yo, because, because hold on. The women of today, need some tran- transactional interaction with a man for them to give the coochie now. Okay, some, I, not all. Most. Most, 90 percentile. 90 percentile. And not all. I'm 90, a- 90, 90 percentile. 90 percentile. Listen, I was always the kind of person who, like, now that I'm retired, but before that, I was always the kind of person who was like, yo, if we're just hooking up, we're just hooking up. Because then if you start, like, there was a situation where it turned into like hooking up and then going on dates and then the lines got blurred and i was like what the fuck is going on and he was like what the fuck is going on and both of us had different feelings for each other and then just ended badly so like my advice to those of you who are just looking to hook up just hook up and don't go on dates and if you actually want a future with somebody then go on dates and that's how you become retired like me like i said 90 percent of women need some transactional interaction for them to give up the coochie they don't want to just give up the coochie, quote unquote, for free, right? It's like, oh no, he he enjoyed my time. That's why I'm giving up the coochie. Oh my god, that's such bullshit. The minute you go on a date with somebody and the guy is telling you he just wants to hook up, it's literally like it just honestly, oh, I feel like it's it's like it's like women who the type of women who like will use a man for like their financial situation or something like the ones who always want something like. Like, those are the kind who are like, oh, like, he bought me a bag and then we fucked. Like, you know, like, it just, to me, that's trashy. Mm. Like, that's mm. what you were looking for to have sex. Like, you sound better off saying you guys both just fucked and didn't do anything else. In my opinion. You sound like a hoe if you're saying, oh, he bought me, he bought me a bag, so I fucked him. Yeah. So that's same, it? You could be bought? It's the same analogy. It's that same thing as, yo, at least kiss me before you fuck me. Right? It's like that. At uh, least, at least take me on a fucking date before you, before you stick your dick. But in that's my if, friend. but that's if, but that's only. I only say that if the intentions are are not to build a relationship and to go any further than that. If it is, then then, well, if it's to go, okay. Like, I'm not saying you're gonna fuck after the first date, but if the the you thing might, is to, you might. You might. Well, if you're trying to build a relationship, whatever, and like you end up fucking on the first date, but those, then again, those aren't the kind of people who are saying like, oh, he bought me dinner and then we fucked. Like, like I, at least I got dinner out of it. You know, like there's two different types of people. The ones who like to fucking be bought for, get things and then fuck. And the ones who want to build and don't consider what they got out of it as a positive 
to having sex with the person. Okay. All right. And that was our random conversation to start off this uh, episode. Uh, <laughs> our relationship uh, expert conversation. There we go. All right. So let's get into pop culture news. All right. We're going to start off with the top news of the week that happened over the weekend. Uh, King, R.I.P. King Vine. Uh, yes. Some of you guys may or may not know of King Vine. He was still up and coming, relatively new to the scene. I did uh, not know him. Yeah. So relatively new to the scene. He's been around for a few years under the wing of Little Dirt. And uh, he was breaking away with his own, like, you know, crazy story that went viral with, for him. And then this year he had another viral story. I mean, another viral um, song that actually went big for him, well, took her to the O. And that was kind of something that was like people were starting to vibe with, with uh, King Barnes. Uh, but he was in, um, you know, Atlanta. And a uh, tragic situation happened when he was brawling with allegedly Quando Rondo's and, uh, Quando Rondo and his crew. Mm -hmm. uh, you can see like a video of him whipping someone's ass. They, they're saying it is allegedly uh, Quando Rondo. And then Quando Rondo associate allegedly backed out a gun and shot King Von. From behind the SUV. Yeah. It Close came out like randomly from behind the yeah. SUV. He like came out, backed out the gun, shot King Von uh, a few times and shot his manager in the leg. Uh, those bullets that hit uh, King Von seemed stuck because they took him to the hospital and uh, uh, they, after surgeries, he just, he didn't, he didn't make it. Uh, so the unfortunate situation, uh, that mm -hmm. really happened. Yeah. And they were saying, cause when it first happened, like I remember the morning of, I was seeing they're like, Oh, the police shooting is what actually killed him. Okay. And cause after the initial shooting, then there was a shootout with police where shots were fired back and forth. Um, but then they confirmed that that's not what killed him. It was the first shots. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, so now the suspect has been charged, 22 years old. Yeah, um, little, little Timmy is his name. Yeah, and now Asian, it's Asian Doll, right? Or Asian the Brat, what's, it's, what is it's it? It's Asian Doll, they're all dolls. Okay. Don't, yeah, don't I wasn't them. sure. Yeah, they're all yeah. Asian doll. okay, so Asian Doll, who was dating King Von at the time. No, yo, they weren't even dating at the time. Oh, never mind, they were not dating. I really don't know the situation, but they're, they're, his manager was like, they hadn't been together for some time. Okay, so he just had a he had love for her. So okay, so whatever they had going on, she's going back and forth with his manager about what his last words were. She's saying it was something about like you would let them get me or whatever, yeah. and his manager is saying no. It was tell Dirk I love him and my fans that I love them, and then um, she's also saying like how nobody even helped Vaughn in the situation. Um, and his manager's like, I was fully helping him. And then his sister or somebody, somebody related to King Vaughn released some footage. I saw of home security footage of his friends allegedly taking a bunch of stuff from his house. Like today, um, like they just went in and took a bunch of shit that wasn't theirs because he's dead. Um, so a lot of people are kind of like, just like, I, basically the root of the conversation I'm hearing is just pretty much like, it goes back to loyalty and having yeah. people backs. All right. So I'm glad that you brought this up because I took a ton of time myself to uh, watch his interview, uh, the King Vine's interview with DJ, uh, DJ Academic, who, which I found out that King Vine's manager is actually the manager of YNW Melly as well. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Great. I don't <laughs> I, when I saw, when I saw, I was like, "What the fuck? This guy just has a... I don't want to ask you." The bad that. roster. I, ah, I wasn't gonna say that. <laughs> he has a bad roster. <laughs> I was gonna say that, man. No disrespect, too, but it was, like it was too soon. I didn't want to say. Well, you. No, said, I don't mean it in a disrespectful way, but like it's true. Like, like now, what do you have? Uh so, um, yeah. So in the interview with DJ Academics, the DJ Vaughn's manager said that first King off, Von's manager, not DJ Vaughn, King Vaughn. Man. sorry people sorry let me just i'm a lot more yeah, everybody knows just, what you're saying i just like to interrupt you to remind you how many times you fuck up yeah i fuck up a lot so <laughs> DJ, uh no fuck, i was to do it again <laughs> king von's manager he said that that's false in terms of the people that von rocked with and had around him they're from the o they're from old block chicago they're a very tight-knit crew of people they they live each, they live for each other they die for each other they stand for each other um and they would give their life for one another so and you saw it even you've heard the reports that two of his friends died yeah because that night so you could you could see the test that 
these the friendship that he had with these people were very strong and these guys didn't you know scatter once the bullets uh started shooting from Quando Rondo's associate alleged associate uh they started scattering after shots rang out from the security guard undercover cops that were already present because they didn't know where the shots came out and those officers were spraying the fucking uh the thing up with bullets uh a lot of those guys st- they he was also said the incident in terms of when bond was inside the vehicle to when bond started fighting it literally it was instantaneous mm-hmm. it was someone told bond yo homeboy here Vaughn perked up and got busy, you know, beating the brakes off of homeboy. And uh, because he had allegedly tweeted saying that, yo, when I catch Quando Rondo, I'm going to beat him like a little boy. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, Vaughn stood on his tweets and he did such like that. And also another thing is that Vaughn's manager said that the way that Asian Doll is tweeting, making it seem like dude called her while he was on the fucking stretcher deathbed going like, yo, babes, they left me. Them, them, them guys are snakes. They yeah, loyal. because how would she know that that's his last word? Oh, you know why? I know why, I know why, I know why. She said that it was a spiritual visit or something. Because she's, she's talking to a spiritual advisor. advisor. Yeah, exactly. So she's not, like, basically what she's saying is not based on facts. Like, She's saying she just, like, got a spiritual thing from him, whatever, and it's very real. I believe in the spiritual stuff, but I, I wouldn't necessarily say that, like, I wouldn't be, like, taking what he's saying to me spiritually as, like, that's what he said, for she sure. She her Instagram after, after dude said everything. and Because think about it. When I was seeing stuff, I was like, okay, the first few tweets that I've seen from her when the, the news first broke out, warning. I yeah. understand. Fine, yeah. A couple of tweets after that, like, you're sure bugging. Yeah. She she went on Instagram live too and, and did a bunch of shit. I don't know exactly what she did, but um yeah, she just Yeah, she's going through it. I I, I can understand that she's going through it, but like at the same time, you're sure bugging, man. Yeah, I um I can understand her well, I can't say I understand her grief, but I could I guess uh just like sympathize for her basically at the same time. Um but like I I feel like they say there's seven stages of grief and one of them is like anger. So maybe she's in the anger stage. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, she's probably in the anger stage. But yeah. just, to, just to clarify that Vaughn's people they were, are not disloyal people. Uh, they didn't take advantage of him from what his manager said. Uh, that he did his best to, uh, you know, take care of them and, and put them on and, and get them to feed themselves mm-hmm. before he passed away. And uh, that's that's all. And then apparently that he owns his masters, so his family and his children will be able to eat off his royalties for the rest of Oh, that's of good. Life. I didn't know that. Yeah, so that's good. That is that's one thing that's wanted to put out there. But yeah, the yeah. everything else is just unfortunate situation. Uh cooler heads could have prevailed, but uh like Birdman said a few time a few years ago during his interview with Angie Martinez, he said, Um, this is hip hop. The shit gets gangster sometimes. So you got to be ready when it comes around you, when it comes to you, because this shit really gets gangster. This shit gets vile. Yeah, well, it did. And did you see what T.I. posted on Instagram? Yeah, T.I. I think T.I.'s on a uh, on a roll with a whole bunch of this, this dumbass shit he's doing. He said something about, like, don't bring your fighting to our city of yeah. Atlanta. It's a beautiful city, blah, blah, blah. Keep it in your own cities. Yeah. And then a King Von sister tweeted something about, like, shut up, I seen you at the club last weekend. Don't make me talk about how you cheat on Tiny all the time or whatever. And I'm like, this is turning into so much other shit that doesn't yeah, it's just it's stupid it's stupid also when i saw that too myself i was like yo i was like okay if if no one's beefing in atlanta just suddenly the crime rate just disappeared yeah but yeah we, we, we just reported on what's his name uh hooter is pablo wine yeah he got hit up with a racketeering case yeah he's a lot of native yeah what the fuck is ti talking about no. and also King Vaughn is from Chirac, right? Yeah. Uh, and uh, Quando Rondo, he's from Savannah, which mm-hmm. is in Georgia. What city? Where? Where were? They, where were they going to beef if it not Atlanta? 
Iowa. <laughs> yeah, be bugging, man. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's just yeah, it's an unfortunate situation. Rest in peace to him. Um, and yeah, um, just another person to add to the list of artists that we've lost. Um, yeah, like, oh man, yo, this twenty twenty's been taking people. Man. I'm saying, bro. I'm dead at Trebek. I was just gonna say that. Yeah, recipes to Alex Trebek. He died eighty years old. Yeah. Um. Yeah, well, that you, was. You've been known that he had cancer though. But it still caught me off guard because he said he was doing good. Yeah. Like I saw it and I was like, wow. I thought you were like gonna be okay. Um. I, I did not know he was Canadian either. I knew that. Yeah. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Born in Sudbury. Um, oh, yeah. for real? Yeah. Yo, I was smashing a girl up from Sudbury, yo. Pussy fire. When? Oh, fuck. I don't know why I exposed that. <laughs> <laughs> well, now you have to tell us <laughs> when and how and why. When were you in Sudbury? I was never in Sudbury, man. I was never in Sudbury. She's from Sudbury. She just... Okay. And Pussy how... Fire. They have black people in Sudbury. She wasn't black, man. Oh, she was white. Yeah. I thought you were done with that. I thought so too. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm done now. I'm done now. Okay. Yeah. And how did this happen? Huh? How did this happen? You have to tell us now. We're here. Hinge, so. Hinge, hinge is how it happened, man. Oh, okay. And it was yeah. happened here. Yeah, in all, in the G, the GTA. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, um. Well, well congratulations fire. on that. And not no graduation. It's just over now, but she was fired. Okay. Um, oh, oh, you want to know? You want to know something, Nina? What? Yo, I I know I'm the five minute man. But you lasted well, longer. Yo, I gave her some. I yo, I I walked out of there. I walked out I'm of there, fine. Nina. I hold, hold. I saw why. I'm sorry, Joel, for listening to this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm so sorry, you know, yo. Uh, I'm Joel, sorry for first he listens to it. He don't you see the type of editing he does? He listens yeah. to the whole thing. Yeah, I'm sorry for you for listening to this. Shout out but, to Joel though for editing all his stuff because he does a good job. Yeah, uh, yeah. I was in there going crazy. I walked out of there like, yo, I impressed myself. So what was it? Seven minutes and seven I didn't, oh, come on, come on, Nina, stop. stop. What? I'm just stop. asking. Your 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 bar of impressive is very no, different. I, from others. Honest, it wasn't no seven. It was double digit numbers. I I knew that for a fact. Okay, that's, double digit numbers. You know, I was like, yeah. I walked out like, yeah. And I was like, fuck, man. Do and, and I was like, damn. Do she think I love her now? Did she text you after? Yeah, that's why this shit's over. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I just, I, I just feel that's like what, when you happen when you get, when you give someone the good strokes after, you know, sitting a low bar, it's like nah, you try and do something. So was it like 20, 25, 30? I don't know if I was going for twenty five, but I was in there for a minute. Yeah. Twenty to twenty five. All right, that's not that's not bad. Good job. You quadrupled your initial time. I don't even want to put that information out there though. Well, it's too I late. Wanted, I just wanted to tell you just because, you know. Well, man, now it's listen. too late. Yeah. That's okay. Um, um, my last session was about 25 minutes, 20 minutes, between 20 to 25. There. See, I'm not trying to average that, though. That's my thing. I'm not trying to average that. Why? It's fun. Nah, good it's cardio just, workout. Then you don't have to do cardio at the gym. The pussy was just fire. Like, when you're, yo, <laughs> yo let me try. All right, let me just. Like, I don't know how pussy feels like, so. Yeah. Pussy was fire. <laughs> When you got some fire coochie, man, I'm gonna tell you. When you got some fire coochie around you, you start to like guys start to do, you know, other things at like a higher quality. You know, I I gave her a whole like back massage on some like, yo, I'm really trying to dig in the muscle, like muscle relief and all of that shit. Like you do, you do like small things. Okay, just cut it out. You sound like a simp now. Just stop. All right, man. save it. Actually, no, ain't no swim in my body, bro. But I'm trying to save you. Hey, man. I didn't even no. ask or nothing like that. But, <laughs> <laughs> I was not like that. But, like, yeah, I just, yeah, man. Maybe. Never again, though. Never again, though. All right. I'm out, I'm out the game. People need to know this, though. What do you mean you're out the game? I'm out the game. Like, I'm out the dating game. Man. So you're just not, you're not talking to someone or you're talking to someone? I'm not talking to anybody, man. Oh, you're just done. Yeah, I'm done. I'm not the game. I've been but you've been that. saying that for months, and you don't seem done. So hold on, this is the first time I actually spoke about a girl on here in months. Come on, man. In months, yeah, but you, we know you were not done in between that time frame. 
How do you guys know this? I know this. You're never not talking to somebody. You know, I'm not talking to anyone. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. Like I, I, I feel like every almost everybody's like that where they're never not talking to somebody. Hey, I'm not talking to anyone now. Like I said, I'm out the game, man. All right, whatever you game, say, man. you guys. Um, mark this episode November 11th and let me know when he talks about someone again. Thank you. I, when was I, when was the last time I talked about someone else? It was nobody, okay. Man. Anyways, moving on. Dr. Oh, Dre's shit. wife. I just want to say I was right about this. Dr. Dre's wife is trying to find out if he had any kids outside of their marriage while they were together. Oh, after man. she's been trying to get three of his mistresses to testify in court. Oh, how was that place, by the way? Oh, I was just going to reference the coochie I had. It was hot box. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anyways, that's what I was saying. Um, so Dr. Dre's <laughs> wife was trying to get these women to testify. Remember I said that I didn't understand why Dr. Dre was agreeing to do all of this. Um, and now I feel like you're just, now you're just thinking about your sexual smirking. What I'm saying is not smirk worthy. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I'm just going to let you. Yo, I hate the fact that you know me so well. <laughs> Just looking at you, the way you're looking, I'm like, oh god, something else is good. <laughs> My mind was solely like, not on Dr. Dre's wife, bro. Oh, All right, let's get back to it. Let's okay, back to it. yeah. So basically, yeah, if you remember a couple episodes ago, how I was saying it doesn't make sense why Dr. Dre's just giving in and being like, yeah, I'll give you the money. Um, unless he cheated on her like 51 times and then the 52nd time she just had enough. So uh, looks like he did cheat on her with at least three other women. I'm sure there was more. Um, and yeah, she's trying to get them to testify in court. One of them's giving her a hard time and is like, yeah. I'm not going to testify because this serves no purpose, which is kind of weird because why are you giving him our time unless you are hiding a child that was made from outside the marriage? So that's my theory I on see, that. Oh, one thing. Well, they're married for like 25 years, right? 24, yeah. The fact that he had three mistresses. Well, that we know about or that she's trying to testify. He could have 24. One for each year? Yeah. Or he could have 48, two for each year. Never underestimate uh, uh, the But also, the fact that he had, like, the fact that he has, huh? It said never yeah. underestimate the sliminess. I mean, he's a billionaire. He should, he should be allowed to have... No! A, a, a if you want to marry somebody, you want to marry them, not all the other women. You know, back in the days, a king had his... No, wife, we're not back in the days. We're in 2020. Damn near 2021. The concubines. No, no. <laughs> a man can't have concubines out of <laughs> No, what the fuck is a concubine? <laughs> Come on, man. He's making a lot of money. Why can't? But no. um, but I digress. The fact that he had three mistresses and the fact that his wife uh found out about him. Uh app- oh, also apparently uh cheating in the state of California is not uh, a yeah, yeah like the divorce in California, it, there's no, like, no one's at fault when you yeah. have a divorce in California. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just thought it was interesting. But, yeah, so I just wanted to share that I was right, basically. Um, okay, but Erica Mena, remember when Iggy and Playboy broke up and she shared a picture of their baby? So yeah. Erica Mena did the same thing. So Safari shared some picture about getting divorced, and then Erica Mena posted something about being single, and then Erica Mena shared a picture of their daughter, Sapphire, um, and then... I feel like that name suits her. Yeah, it's kind of a nice name. Yeah. And then, boom, ta-da, they're back together again. Honestly, they do this all the fucking time. Like, even when they first started, like, dating and they were about to get married, I remember she posted, she she broke all the vases of roses he sent to her and shit and posted on her story. Like, they've been doing this back and forth shit. It's fucking annoying. Honestly, they're just an off-brand version of Cardi being offset to me. Uh, they just keep doing the same shit, posting yeah, how, how they're broken up and not broken up on social media, and then they get back together, and they all look like a bunch of dumbasses. Yeah, what are they, they, um... Dominican and Jamaican? Yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it sounds, sounds like a very yeah. toxic, aggressive situation. Yeah. It's the Caribbean love. <laughs> Is it Dominican? Yeah, Dominican is in Caribbean. Yeah, it's yeah. It sounds, it just, it just, it just like, honestly, it's just annoying. Like, like if you know you're going to fight that much and you're going to get back together, why keep posting about it? Just shut up and keep it to yourself so it looks like you were together the whole time. Mm-hmm. People are just dumb. 
I just yeah, don't understand. Yeah, I also yeah. think it could be a publicity stunt to keep attention on them. Yeah, probably. I mean, get people to their OnlyFans. Uh, yeah. Also, yo, that that breakup right after you have a kid and then post, and the woman starts posting the kid all on social media, man, that shit kind of corny, man. It is. It's petty and it's immature and it's yeah. honestly disrespectful to the child because it's like you're using the child as a pawn to, like, piss off your husband. That's not what a kid is there for. Yeah. Like, I see, like, girls on Hinge as well. Like, though, <laughs> I just... No, this is real life. No, this is real life. I know this is real life. Girls on Hinge, they'll post, like, I think you get, like, four or five pictures you can post on Hinge. Like, mm-hmm. either all four or, like, three out of the four are pictures, are pictures of them and their child. Like, what the fuck? Like, yeah, that's kind of weird. What, what, what's, the, what, what, what's the point of this? Or maybe they want to be transparent that they have a kid. You know you get a tab that says have children. That's all Oh, I'm yeah, thinking. you do. Yeah. Sorry, I, I haven't used it in so long. I, I wouldn't. Oh, thank you, Nina. <laughs> Retired, all right. You get it. You get it. You get it. You get it. Okay. Just <laughs> you making it. sure you guys know. You get it. You get it. All right. Uh, so Kiki Palmer went under fire because uh, she's dating a white guy. Is, is this is this facts though? Yeah. Okay. So she posted a video on Twitter of her. Yeah, that video. The caption was kind of like, I don't know. If she was playing and trolling. I'm not quite sure. And no, I, I don't think know she really. She didn't really kiss dude in the video either. It was like a super slow, weird kiss. Like it wasn't even a makeout. I don't know. Yeah. But I think I think it's for real. I think she's actually dating this guy, and she's been dating him for a minute. Um, but she's just been keeping it as like kind of a secret. Um, and basically, this was before like the election happened. But so while Donald was still in office, like a couple days before the election, so tensions in America are high, all this shit. And this girl is saying basically like like Kiki tweets something like, "I see a lot of people living their life one way and voting another." And then a fan responded, "Like you," and she's like, Kiki was basically like what are you talking about and she's like we've seen you kissing that colonizer on his mouth that's not the choice you should be making right now and kiki's like i'm mad that this is what you're mad at me for and then i just started thinking like i know donald trump has already separated the country well he separated the country in terms of race a while ago when he started but now what has it come to the point where like like now he's out of office fine i feel like it's going to be a little less tension um but like what is it to the point where like interracial are we going back to 1960 something when people are like no you shouldn't be interracially dating because donald trump was out here and separated all of us and we don't know who who actually voted for him and who didn't because he's racist and if you voted for him you're racist which fine i I can agree with that like i believe people vote for donald trump are racist i agree with that but are we to the point where we're just assuming that everybody like all white people are team donald trump and you know like i just i just thought it was made me feel yeah, like i don't i don't know if they really all right maybe in the media landscape of things maybe that shit have might have divided up uh, black and white but if you get down to the surface i don't know if black people just not really fucking with white people like that yeah but i just thought it was just it just made me think of like back in the day when interracial dating was like you couldn't do it or like you were forbidden from doing it and then i was just like what the hell like okay so okay what are your thoughts on interracial dating or for you does it depend on the race like do you look negatively at a black man who's dating a white woman or vice versa or versus a black man i'll use myself a black man who's dating an indian girl or vice versa to be honest uh I don't know. I don't know if I really inter- interracially dated. I've never brought home a, uh, a different girl. race. Well, yeah, I've never or a different white girl. Manner. Yeah, okay. A different race girl, ethnicity girl to my mom. So I've never claimed one publicly. Mm-hmm. But uh, I don't think anything wrong with it, though. Yeah, like for me, like, like I think of um, Love is Blind with Cameron and Lauren. Did you watch that show or no? I still haven't watched it. But they're still together, though? Yeah. You need to watch it. Okay, I think of Cameron and Lauren. So Cameron's a white guy. Lauren's a black girl from Atlanta. I think Atlanta. And um, basically, uh, like, they were dating whatever. And then Cameron, like, Lauren was pretty much asking because she'd never been with a white guy. And she was pretty much just saying, like, are you, like, ready for this? Whatever. Like, a lot of people are going to have a lot of things to say. And she's like, yeah. Um, he's like, yeah. Like, I was with, like, a black girl before you. And it was very serious. And, like, people used to be in the streets, like, yelling at her, like, why aren't you with a black man? And blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I was like, yeah, like, you know, like I've heard of people saying and doing that stuff as well. And then he met her dad and her dad pretty much had the same thing, which I understand because if you're coming from like the, 
the like if we're talking about the the social racial ladder whatever if you're coming from the top of the ladder and you're dating someone who's perceived as being the bottom of the ladder and is treated like such in the world when it comes to um i don't know wages poverty all that stuff etc like i understand why that might be a concern because then you might not understand how certain things affect them differently compared to how it affects you um but wouldn't that be more of a class issue rather than a racial issue well, it could be argued also that like class, the reason class issues mostly affect like, like, like the hood was made. I watched an interview recently basically explaining how the hood was made for black people. Like, so they could never get out pretty much. Mm-hmm. You could kind of in, intertwine both in a sense. Um, but for me, like, like, I don't look at it as a bad thing. Like when I don't look at interracial relationships as a bad thing. I personally think it's kind of cool to like introduce someone else to a whole other culture and like, like just introduce those kind of things to somebody else and kind of like there's there's a whole other world out there so i kind of think it's pretty cool in that sense um i don't think it's a bad thing at all um but i can understand where the concern comes from in that sense of of not understanding but i don't think again like and i know like i'm guilty i've said things on here before that makes it seem like i think this way but like we can't paint all white people with the same brush the same way you can't like the same way you can't paint all brown people as terrorists or all black people as robbers you know what i mean like you can't you can't be painting everyone with the same brush. Not everybody's like that. So, yeah, that's my thoughts on interracial dating. Yeah, I mean, hey, man, I agree with you. I, I'm not, I'm not going to push back. I don't, I don't have nothing wrong with it. <laughs> I never yeah. had. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, okay, YNW Melly's mom and girlfriend threw him a stripper party outside of his cell across the street. Yeah, I saw that. And then right after that, uh, it started rumors of him saying that he killed his folks. Killed his friends. Yeah, I saw oh, that too. Yeah. yeah. Right after, right after that, it was like, oh, why not be Melly? Maybe and he didn't I, tip the strippers enough. Maybe that's why. Hit <laughs> him a stripper party, and then right after, yo, video evidence of of him saying that he got his folks. I was like, whoa, what the fuck? Yeah, you that's kind of media's nasty, man. Yeah, it was kind of crazy still, but I just uh, I mean, I, that's, uh, I mean, I looked at it as it looked cool to be look on a video, but like if me in jail across the street in a cell, like how how are you going to see that far? Do you even know who's there? Do you even know it's actually for you or there's a random party happening? Like now I'm going to go back to my cell and beat my meat to like you know squinted images of strippers on the in my side. head. Yeah, yeah, uh, just yeah, weird. Um, Larsa Pippen. This happened today. She spoke on her falling out from the Kardashians. She's talking too much. Or maybe she's not talking enough. She's know. talking too much or she's not talking enough. Basically, she's saying that she was with Tristan before Chloe, and she actually met up with Tristan in California and brought him to one of Kim's parties, and that's how he met Chloe. And then, like, a couple days later, basically left her for Chloe. Mm-hmm. Um, and then she says that Kanye brainwashed the whole family into cutting off Larsa. Um, she also talks about how she went to a nightclub one night and she saw Travis there and she went to go say hi to him. And then Travis called Kylie and was like, Larsa's flirting with me. And she was like, mm. was it? and so they kept asking her, they're like, do you know why they cut, like why they cut you off? Like whatever. And she's like, no, I honestly don't know. She kept saying, I don't know. I don't know. And then she'd like say this stuff. And then she just basically denied doing anything ever wrong. And like to the point where it's like, she just keeps saying, no, I don't know. I don't know. Oh my God. It's so crazy. I don't know. Like in that dumb airhead voice. And you could just tell she's lying about something. Just, just. She, she's not with, pa- she's not with Scotty no more, right? No. Nope. She's back. I thought, she, oh. I thought, I thought that she, he had took her back after future. That's what I thought too, but I don't think she's with him anymore. I just think I would be very embarrassed to be one of her children. That's all I'm going to say from that. She's damn near 40 years old acting like this. Oh, she, she, oh, she just about to hit 40. Yeah, I think so. Let me Google her age right now because Kim is, Kim just turned 40. I know she was around the same age. Um, but yeah, like she just, she's just like, I just don't, yeah. For, no, she's 46. Whoa. Yeah. So you're damn near 50 years old acting like this. It says that she's still married to Scotty. It doesn't say she's not married to him. I guess like the end of the relationship. her first son scotty pippen jr is 20 years old like imagine being the 20 year old child of this woman and hearing like you know what's happening you're hearing that's fine the 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 other kids who are there's a 12 year old there's an 18 year old and a 15 year old no they're, they all know what's going on the 12 year old maybe might not know everything but oh, the rest of them are three kids for scotty yeah okay 
Yeah, the rest of them for sure know what's going on. I would be so embarrassed. Like, I would think my mom's a hoe. That's embarrassing. I mean... Why? It's true. Either, either, either she's not good company or she did something wrong. I think she just likes to, like, she wants to, like, fit in with a certain crowd and, like, she tries so hard. Like, she literally changed her whole face and body to look exactly like Kim to the point where in some episodes I almost confused her with Kim sometimes. Mm. Like, she just wants to be, like, fit a certain image really badly and it's just, like... She got, like, the ant, the ant bum. Yeah, the ant bum and the, the skinny pinched nose and the big lips and, like, all that stuff. And it's just, like, Kay, like... She's white, though, right? Yeah, I think so. I think she's just plain old white. I don't think she has any sort of um, culture to oh, her. Oh, don't say... Don't say white Not people. culture, but, like, 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 I don't think she has any sort of... Um, yeah, she's a nationality, she's just American. Yeah, okay. Yeah, she's just white, yeah. Larsa Pimpin got the fire coochie, man. Uh, I don't know about that. I mean, she she uh, went to she lost her and Chloe and and Future and all of them and but 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 Chloe but Chloe's gonna hold you down. She's gonna hold you down. She held down the alleged uh, uh, crackhead uh, uh, Lamar Odom. Alleged. Um, <laughs> it's not very legend. They fully talk about how she went, her and Chris Jenner went to Lamar's hotel and Chloe beat one of the strippers' asses or the, the prostitutes' asses in the hotel room. They talk about it on the show now. That's what I'm saying. She she gonna hold you down. Yeah, but 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 I also think Tristan just didn't want a fifty year old with five kids with a basketball legend when he's also a basketball player. That Granted. could also be it too. Granted, yes, she had she has five kids. Or four or five kids, however many it was. Four five. five? Something. She had a lot. But, and then, okay, I also saw a tweet on Twitter, but you know Tana Munyo, Tana Munjo, however you say her name? Tana Mangu? Mangu? Yeah, that girl. Yeah, whatever. However you say her name, whatever. She tweeted about how, um, <laughs> something about, like, losing a guy to the Kardashians and how it's happened three times to her. And she's like, wouldn't recommend for self-esteem. Like, it really hurts. And I'm sitting there, I'm trying to think. I'm like, who the fuck did she date that they dated? Either, oh, all right, so the only one available is, is what, Kendall? Yeah, Kendall. Well, allegedly, she's with Devin Booker, a basketball player. So, I don't know. And he was at her birthday party, so it seems pretty plausible. So, whatever Tana has been dating, she might have lost that to Kendall. Kendall. That's what I'm thinking, too, because Tana only dates white guys. And, like, the rest of them are all with black guys. And Kendall has Kendall's normally with light skinned guys. Like even Devin's mixed as well. So like, probably her. That's her thing, man. They like their uh, their mind, uh, their men kind of uh, swirl Neapolitan. If you ask, <laughs> Neapolitan. Yeah. A little um, bit of pink in them, a little bit of white in them, a little bit of brown in them. Yeah, because Devin's Asian, half Asian and half black. I'm pretty sure he looks Asian. Um, but but yeah. They like men a little Neapolitan, man. Yeah. Um, anyways, into quick bite news. Um, so speaking of Lamar Odom, Sabrina Parr, who was his like fiance, whatever, and they were all over social media for a little yeah. bit, says that he needs serious help, and she broke off her engagement with him. So he's single again. Maybe he's back in the same loop he was with Chloe, the alleged crackhead. Honestly, I think it's pretty confirmed. He almost died in a brothel from a drug overdose. So I think it's pretty confirmed. Um, but yeah, so she broke off her engagement with him. Sucks for you, Lamar. Um, yeah. And Lori Harvey only got two years probation on her hit and run case. So. Yeah, that, that, that's, that Terrence J. That Terrence J. Bag. <laughs> <laughs> they're going to get you out of that sticky situation, man. Yep. We're never going to know what happened. Yo, know, Tory Lane should hire uh, whoever Tory, uh, Terrence J.'s uh, lawyer is. And Lori Harvey. Yeah, man. Probably the same lawyer. They yeah. look, are like family ish, right? I don't know. Are they? Big. They look. Well, she looks at him as big bro. No. I don't know. Lori looks at Terrence like that. I don't know. I didn't know I swear, that. I swear they're cool. Like I swear, like yo, they they, they tight. I don't know. I don't follow Lori. I follow Terrence, but I never really seen much like that. I never really looked for much like that. Yeah, Terrence, Terrence J gonna get you out the sticky situation, man. 
Yeah. What happened to him? He no no news coverage, no like documents unsealed about the whole thing. He, that shit's on racks. Yep. And he nobody sold knows. He sold happened. his soul for, <laughs> for secrecy. Yep. <laughs> I don't know what Terrence Jordan's doing behind them closed doors, but boy, you will never know. We'll never ever know what happened. No. Maybe one day, maybe 10 years. Maybe if we just DM him every day and try and figure out. But uh, Oh, so here's another question I have for you, Nina. Since um, Kamala Harris is the first uh, women vice president, woman of color, and uh, she's also black. Half and- of me, half of you. Yeah. So your future <laughs> children are going to be looking like Kamala Harris, right? Uh, <laughs> That's if, if things continue the way they are, yes. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, hopefully she doesn't, hopefully don't act like Kamala. Kamala. <laughs> but, um, Okay, so do you, so since you since she's half black, half you know South Asian, Indian, uh, first woman of color vice president, you you are uh, did the South Asian community they claim her? Do they claim her? Yeah, yeah, because I've heard a lot of um uh like a lot of people like older people even are like oh yeah she's half Indian she's half Tamil mind you I will say this I don't think if she was running for president if she was just a celebrity or something they wouldn't claim her if she was just a celebrity. Yeah, this she's just a celebrity, like a rapper or a singer or something, they yeah. probably wouldn't, like, the older generation wouldn't claim her. Like, right now, the younger generation, sure, like, we're very different from the older generation, but right now, all, everybody's claiming her. Yeah. But I don't she, think they would. She's Tamil, though. But that, is, is Tamil the most, more dominant of ethnicity in India, or no? I don't really know, to be honest. Is Pujami, or is just Pujami, do I just have a sense of Pujami's more because there's more around here? Yeah, I think so, yeah, but I don't, I don't think we're, like, the most, we're not, we're definitely not the biggest population there, but for us, the reason why we think of it like that is because there's so many here, yeah. um, like, here and in BC, but, um, I think, like, I don't, I honestly don't know, I don't know, but, like, colorism is real within the South Asian community, too, and that's why I'm also seeing, like, Indians wouldn't also claim her because she's half Tamil. Like, she's not a fair-skinned Indian. Like, mm-hmm. you know? Tamils so, are what? Historically darker skin, right? Yeah. So, I feel like, yeah. I feel like it's just kind of like a... Because of what she's doing. Yeah. And I know what? Tamils are also from India and Sri Lanka as well. It's like the ethnic group that kind of travels. Apparently, Sri Lanka is in India. I didn't know this for a long time. Up until last year. Yeah. So I think it's a state in India. I'm going to Google it right now. But I was told that because I was like, no. They're like, yeah, it's in India. Yeah. (laughs) Here, is Sri Lanka in India? Hang on, it's loading. One second. One second, guys. Um, 40 miles off the coast of, of Southeast India in the Indian Ocean. So... Under, well, India and Sri Lanka got their independence one year apart. So maybe, oh, they never made Sri Lanka a part of India. And as you can see from this map of British India, it did not include Sri Lanka. Okay, so maybe it is its own country. Is it is okay? All right. And it's I don't I don't know, but I was right. I was right. I was right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Anyways, what were you gonna say? Was there anything? You I would just say have? Sri Lanka has Tamils as well as India. So there's like the ethnic people are both like separated. Yeah. Yeah, from what I know. All right, so all right, so granted, so she's Tamil, she's light skin, she's mixed with black. I know some Indians look at uh, you know, some Indians look at mixed with black as you know tainted goods. Yeah. Uh, so I guess because she's now in a very coveted position, it's like all right, fuck all that black shit. You're Indian, man. Yeah. You know how yeah, yeah, I don't think anybody really, like, I've never seen anybody be like, oh my god, like any of the Indian generation be like, oh my god, she's half black and Indian. It's just like, oh, she's Indian. Okay. All right. Oh. Okay. Because okay. black people are claiming her as well. So. Yeah, I see that. Yeah. Everybody's claiming her now. Yeah. Yeah. It's just it's but it makes me think too because even there's um, ah uh, not Willie O'Ree. He was the first colored black hockey player in the NHL. Yeah. And his wife was actually Indian, and they have a daughter who's half Indian, half black. Um, his wife was like the same Indian as me, and um, like. <clears throat> Uh, I I was like reading the story, and it was from like nineteen like they got married in like nineteen eighties or s- maybe even sixties or seventies, and like I was just thinking I was like wow her whole family probably disowned her, mm. like especially like that back in the day for sure. There's no way mm. they continued any sort of relationships. Like it's very rare. 
that that would have happened that early on. Like nowadays, yeah. yeah, nowadays it's more accepted, but like back then, definitely not. Damn. So if I ever, if I ever get like an Indian Indian girlfriend and we like get serious, I gotta hold her down for real. <laughs> <laughs> depending <laughs> depending on her parents, you might have to. Yeah. Her parents might say, "Well, fuck you." Depend- and I'd be like. Damn, I gotta hold on the financial burden now. Yeah, <laughs> like no, depending on what an her, emotional burden. Depend, oh my god. Yeah, depend, depend, it depends, right? Like, like they're not all like that. Like people always say to me, like, oh, like, aren't you scared, whatever? But like my parents, like they both know. Mind you, I didn't tell my dad till recently. That's because I'm not like, like my dad isn't the kind of person that I just go up to and start telling about my day like I do with my mom. Like we're just we never really just had that, you know. I know a lot of girls who are like that, and I know girls who are close with their dad, but I never had that with my dad. But my mom I did. So my mom knew like right away. My dad I told recently, like same thing, like he didn't like they didn't care. They're just like, okay, like whatever, you know. So it really depends. Like I know for instance, like my well, grandpa. You, you have to make it explicit, like, yo, my, my boyfriend's black. Well, I said to them well, I said to them that he like I was like he's not Indian because they always like they like my dad has always said to us go for what you want but like i'd prefer if someone was indian just because like they understand the culture the traditions whatever like all that stuff right that makes sense. yeah I and mean, i'm like okay cool um but so then when i told him i'm like yeah he's not indian like he's half half trini half um guyanese oh, like, you, oh you sprinkled that in uh, he's half no, no 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 but i told him i'm like indian. i'm like but he's not like he's not brown like he's he's black and he's oh. like okay. like and i'm like yeah so i guess i yeah i guess i explicitly said it by starting it off saying like he's not Indian, he's this. You could you could get a you could get a you could get away with like yo he's half Guyanese and it's like all right because they'll think that. he's like he's brown yeah yeah because yeah. yeah. like I have a cousin who married someone who's Guyanese like that um but yeah so yeah I, I guess I explicitly said it but like I said like the older generation is different like if I told my grandpa like yeah he's gonna be fucking racist like oh fuck. My grandparent, my grandparents grew up in that racist mentality. Um, they are the ones who came here from India. My dad was 12 when he came here. So he lived in Toronto for what? He's almost 60 now. So he's been here for a minute. Like my, my parents are different, <clears throat> but my grandparents for sure have that like mentality. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But yeah. So that's what I would say about that. The, the okay. number is 48 years. 48 years. You said he came here as a 12, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's say, I think he's 56, so let's oh, say. So not, so not 40. 44 years. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so he's been here for a minute. My mom came from England, so it's like, yeah, it's different. Okay. All right, so there was a little bit of an educational conversation about race, uh, politics, and culture. Interracial diversity. dating. <laughs> Again, but like on a, what a case more, study. More personal level. <laughs> All right, so uh, yeah, this is a, another episode of the Educated and Reckless Podcast with your host, Apollo PN. No better, Nina. And we'll be back again next week with uh, more educated conversations with a little bit of reckless rhetoric. <laughs> yeah, goodbye, guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's so crazy.